delays, uh, Willie, uh, from the National Guard responding, uh, from you know the Trump Trump sitting there and refusing to give the order, uh, certainly that wouldn't be the case for that to happen again with this new administration. But it's something they're on high alert, not just for this Thursday, but going forward as violence seems to be sadly part of the national political discourse. Yeah, these extremist groups have sort of shifted their mission a bit. NBC News senior reporter Brandy Zadrozny reports on how they've not gone away, they've just changed their tactics. January 6, 2021. Crowds marched to the U.S. Capitol building. Throngs of people grew into thousands. Denise Aguilar posted to social media that day, saying she was there. The revolution's here, guys. We stormed the Capitol, and patriots broke open the doors. Aguilar later said she never breached the building, nor participated in violence. And since then, she's taken her fight back home. It's all about local legislation, your local school district, your, your city council board of supervisors. So it kicked off as a national movement that now parents are realizing we need to start coming to the local government. Her shift is part of a Keep broader trend, according to Jared Holt, who studies domestic extremism at the nonpartisan think tank, the Atlantic Council. Domestic extremism is really like a fluid that matches the container that it's in in any given moment. In a new report, Holt says that following backlash and hundreds of arrests connected to the attack on the Capitol, far-right activists have shifted their focus from national politics to local. A lot of the adaptations that we've seen came in the form of kind of decentralizing these national movements. What are these extremists all talking about at the local level? What is the content? A lot of them are taking it upon themselves to re-engage in the broader conservative culture war. We are here to protect the children of our community. For Aguilar, who we met outside a local school board meeting in California, it's opposition to mandates. We figured out that um, going to the Capitol and working that particular piece doesn't do anything because these legislators have already right, met up their minds. She is the founder of a group called Mamalitia and says her activism is peaceful. Do we look violent to you? Do we look like we're trying to storm any place? Have I ever done anything violent in the Capitol? Absolutely not. Like many who share her goals, Aguilar uses alternative social media platforms like Telegram to organize and strategize. This is what they're doing in the school board meetings. Those go local tactics also being embraced by prominent white nationalists. This is the right approach. Going to the school board meetings, going out to protest. Groups like the Proud Boys responding, taking to the streets of towns in Long Island and North Carolina to protest public health measures. Extremist groups have <laughs> a place that has enough anger and division already that it can be fruitful for them. Are we in a better place now than we were on January 5th of last year? I do think there have been some reassuring signs, but the undercurrents and the conditions that you know led to January 6th, this popularization of conspiracy theories, of extreme sentiments and ideologies, is maybe more pernicious than it was last year. And with the focus off the nation's capital for now, the impact of that extremism can be felt anywhere. So, uh, Mika, obviously, uh, people that are going around brandishing uh, military-style weapons uh, are great reason for concern, people that are threatening school board members, physically threatening school board members. Uh, obviously, the, the great concern over the past year, politicians uh, who are uh, even, uh, we, we've, we've seen in Congress, politicians that have used violent uh, imagery, also a deep concern. Uh, it's important that we separate that from parents, uh, from, from local activists who may disagree with us on mask mandates, vaccine mandates, who peacefully go before a school board or who peacefully go before a city council and state their views. That's actually what we want. That's what we want in this country. We want people, we want activists, uh, whether they're on the right or the left, to take their case uh, to city councils, to school boards, to organize, to run people for office. We uh, have and, been, Joe. have a democratic solution. Uh, to to these debates, uh, but that that's not been happening enough this year. Unfortunately, we've seen a lot of violence, a lot of violent rhetoric, a lot of threats because they're pushing a lot of conspiracy through. Conspiracy theories that obviously cause and the pandemic concerns. has shut and down. What happens 
there's another challenge and that is there's a disagreement on what a fact is. And so that leads to some, uh, you know, in disinformation and people getting hurt indirectly because of that. So there's some 